Uh, does the Os does the Joker have legit Oscar chances? The trailer indicates yes, right? And I think and I think the Academy uh, has been itching to give uh, a, a comic book movie an award. They, you know, they they really wanted to give it to the Black Panther last year. Like they really wanted to give it to Black Panther. This was not even a question. They wanted to make sure that Black Panther was definitely, definitely a movie that was worth the was worth the Academy Award. I mean, okay, so let's let's kind of run back on this one real quick, right? So let's go back to two thousand and eight because you kind of have to. So Heath Ledger dies January two thousand eight. It's not until July two thousand eight we get to see The Dark Knight. We get to see how good of a role he was in that movie how great he was, how perfect he was. And he ultimately ended up getting the best actor. Uh, you know, he beat out Robert Denny Jr. for Tropic Thunder, which honest to God, if you want my honest opinion, I think Robert Denny Jr. did a better job in Tropic Thunder than Heath Ledger did as a Joker. And I say that just because I'm a huge cinephile and the, the, the fact that it was making fun of the industry. But at the end of the day, it was still a worthy giving of that, of that award. So, when you look at, at that, and people thought The Dark Knight was up for, I, I don't remember if it was up for Best Picture, but it should have been up for Best Picture because it was that good of a movie. I, I would argue that in some cases, it should have probably won Best Picture. I forget what won in 2008. But when you've got that, and then, you know, you look at some of the other comic book movies that have come out that have been, uh, that have been great. You know, you, you would argue or you would think that like the Watchmen would have been up. I think it was up for maybe a couple. I mean, if the Watchmen got nothing, it, it, the best cinematography. I mean, Jesus, that movie was shot well. Uh, best uh, best costume design, best set design. I mean, the technical awards should have had a field day with Watchmen. And I don't remember if it was if it was nominated like at all. And then you fast forward a couple of years, you get to like the Dark Knight Rises, which wasn't as good as the Dark Knight, 100 percent. It suffered from its own kind of pretentiousness. Like if you look at Christopher Nolan movies, it is probably the worst one. And that is saying something for Nolan. It's like not a bad movie, but it's just it wasn't what it could have been. I don't know if that's studio interference or if it's just Nolan with his head up his ass. I have no idea. But I think coming off the success of The Dark Knight, it was one of those things where you're like, yeah, I don't think it's possible he could have actually done anything different, you know? I don't, think he, I don't think he could have done much of anything different. So you've got that scenario, right? Where Nolan's Dark Knight Rise or the Dark Knight gets the best, you know, the best supporting actor nod. And then from there, superhero movies kind of start to take off. You know, the start of the MCU. Now we're talking billion dollar properties. We're talking billion dollar things. The special effects are amazing. The stories are okay. The acting is pretty decent. But nothing really kind of brings it home in regards to like, something that the Academy would lose its mind over, something that the Academy would would just completely die over. In my mind, you didn't get anything like that until really Logan in 2017. And I still think Logan, even though it was only up for best adapted screenplay, it deserved it for one. It too, it, James Mangold deserved best director. Hugh Jackman deserved best best actor. And that movie damn straight deserved best picture noms they didn't get it they didn't give it to it right they didn't care enough about it to give it to it even though it was arguably you can ask a lot of people logan was probably one of the best if not the best movie that year right just just across the board what one la, la no no moonlight one first it was la 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 and then it was moonlight Fuck, screw those movies right screw them N neither one of them was able to take a comic book property and turn it into a movie that made grown men cry at the end of it. Like that movie was a tour de force in its own right. A cinematic marvel in its own right. And it deserved a lot more. And then a few months later. Oh, well, really more like 11 months down the road. You know, you get Black Panther. A run of the mill. It is. It's run of the mill. Paint by numbers. Marvel film. Good movie. Fun movie. Kind of rips off Lion King. Everyone loses their mind over it. The Academy comes out a month after it, it, it came out and they say, well, we're going to do a most popular film award in order to give the Academy Award to the most popular movie of the year. 
And everyone and their mother laughed through their head backs like like that one gif from uh, uh, which which is it? The gods must be. Cr- I forget which movie it was. Now we all throw our heads back and laugh. You know what we're talking about. They all do that and laugh because everyone's like, just give it to Black Panther. We know you want to give it to Black Panther. And then, of course, Black Panther gets nominated for a bunch of technical awards and Best Picture. And it was purely symbolic for Best Picture, but it's still it's like it's so bad. Like the technical stuff that it won, I completely agree with. I mean, hell, Suicide Squad won like best costuming, you know, and, and so so it won the technical, which I think that it deserved, but it didn't deserve a best picture nod. It never deserved a best picture nod. It was a simple movie that was fun. But when you talk about the like the complexity of of what Marvel move of, of what these characters go through, and at least in regards to the X-Men and discrimination and bigotry and racism and, and how that played a large part throughout the last, you know, you could say 17 years uh, of Hugh Jackman playing that role in that world and in those environments, in those situations. And it was a very interesting poignant take about cloning and, and immigration. And it really talked about some issues while also being a fantastically written, directed and acted film. Like I said, grown men cried. But the Academy didn't want to give it anything. So when you look at the Joker and you look at the trailer for the Joker, the trailer for the Joker is cut like it's Oscar bait. The trailer for the Joker is cut like it is going to be something that the Academy is going to stand up and take notice of. And that is entirely the damn point. That's the damn point of the Joker is that they want to try to get something that is going to win awards because that is something Marvel can't do. I mean, look, Feige, I love the guy. He's revolutionized movies in a way that any everyone else pales in comparison trying to topple. And he does it so effortlessly, which is fantastic, you know, because you know, he respects the source material, at least for the most part. And so what you do is you have a moment where, where you could see him at the Golden Globes and he's giddy because he's getting all of this awards attention, which is one of the reasons why I think we're seeing a little bit with what we're seeing in regards to the... Uh, this next phase but the joker is designed to be a film that can stand on its own to be a character study and to be completely something that would steal a buttload of oscar gold and i don't think i'm wrong in talking about it like that i don't think i'm wrong in describing it like that i've seen some of the plot leaks some of the some of the 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 descriptions from like the leaked the leaked script and you're like oh yeah oh yeah martin scorsese is a producer, or at least he was a producer. It's heavily influenced by the King of Comedy. De Niro has got an appearance in the movie as the character that his character kidnapped in the King of Comedy, more or less. And you've got the storyline that's kind of similar, just attributed to the Joker. With Joaquin Phoenix, who's a fantastic character actor, who's going to be bringing it because he wants to do this crazy, dark character study. And as a fan of these kind of movies, I don't care. I don't care. I don't give a shit about the Oscar going for the, or about Joker going for Oscar. I don't care about that. To me, the Oscars have been dead since 2000 when Phil Collins beat out Trey Parker and Matt Stone for Blame Canada. All right. Whenever the song he did for Tarzan, which even here it is nearly 20 years later, none of you can remember what that song is, but you know, Blame Canada. As soon as I said it, you're just like, you know it. And it lost out. The Academy has always been about money, power, influence. So that's why, no, the Joker is is aiming for that. And maybe just this year alone, we haven't had a lot of contenders with them. Again, we're coming into the last half of the year. We're coming into the winter season, the awards season. The Academy doesn't know what it, what it wants in general. And they generally, you know, all, all these new people coming in, they don't know what the hell they what the hell they want. So they're not, they're not voting based on a, a meritocracy, which they've never done, by the way. They should, but they don't. But they're voting in regards to it being more of a ideology. And unless the Joker kind of hits those, those boxes, there's no way in hell that this thing is even remotely going to go a, a, and get anywhere near Oscar gold. But it's sure as hell going to try. And it's going to be really interesting if that's the case. And it does.